and his goodness, his mercies, and you know what? He even gave us sunshine in the cold. And we have a lot to be thankful for. But we are here to celebrate a life worth that has been lived and lived well. Uh, a mother that have been to young people that I have met along the way back in the 80s. And I thank God for their lives. So in meeting them, I knew that they had to come from good stock. And you know what made it better? They got saved. Amen. Salvation is what makes it all right. Amen. Bible tell us to train up a child in the way they should go, but they still need salvation. All right, so today is all about many Mike Askew, okay? All right. Uh, this morning, and to the family, we have been praying for you. We have been praying for you. Some of us have gone this way before, and some of us have not yet. And it's a heaviness that only God can send to comfort you, to get you over. You might cry. Let it out. And reflect on the good things that you have received. And build on them. And give your heart to the Lord if you're not saved. That's going to make it even better. <laughs> well, we're going to start the program by the help of the Lord. And I'm sure we are on a time restraint. We're going to ask uh, Elder Darius Brown if he will come for prayer and scripture. Following the prayer and scripture, there will be a song selection by Brother William Maddox. to let the family know we're certainly uh, praying for each of you that God would comfort you during this time. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're thankful, O oh God, for your goodness. We're thankful, Lord, that you told us in all of our ways to acknowledge you and you would direct our path. And Lord, this is a day that we need your direction, dear God, need your guidance, need your comfort, dear Lord, need you to bind up broken hearts. We pray for this family, dear God. Lord, that you would strengthen them in a way that no one else can, dear God. You know all about grief. You know about pain. You know about loss, dear God. And you're the God of all comfort. So, God, we pray that every child, every grandchild, great-grandchild, niece, nephew, sister, brother, God, friend, or neighbor, God, that you would bind up broken hearts. Every friend, dear Lord. Father, that you would allow them to cherish the wonderful memories, dear God, that they have. And God, even the service on today, Lord, would you anoint, would you be with us? Everything that's said and done, may it be of comfort to this family and may it give glory to you. And we'll give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our scripture reading comes from Psalms, the 46th division. God is our, starting at verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word.
No matter where you go, no matter who you know, whether a friend or a brother, I'm sure you never find a love so strong, a love so kind. No love just like a mother's. When there is no one to turn to, and your heart is void of cheer, it seems that no one cares. A mother's love is always right there. There is no other love on earth like a mother's love. call to hold your hand if e'er you fall and then some time to scold you although you are chastised the love within a mother's eyes will always help console you if you really sense the value of the one who brought you here, the one who's always near, then say loudly so each mother can hear. There is no other love on earth like a mother's love. gave us. Old means only that she was growing old and tear for the tears she shed to save us and H for a heart that's pure like gold. E has been for her earnest endeavor and R is for right she strove to be. If you put them all together they spell mother. Many might ask you, you see. All right, I modified that song to share with you on this morning because it seems like the mother's love is the theme of this celebration. Amen. 
okay? It's the theme of this celebration. And we want to be able to reflect on it. And at this time, we're asking for friends or family that would like to make remarks. We're asking for one minute or less. Please comply. Thank you. Line up on this side, and then you could just move around, please. All right, we have one person. Okay, come on. Now, as far as I see, and I'm looking, okay, it looks like that's four, okay. Seems like I have five. Okay, so let's cut off with these. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, wanted to say um, I couldn't sit there and not uh, talk about Mike and my love for and to thank her children and siblings for sharing her with my family, even though I was born into the same family. <laughs> but over the years, um, learned to enjoy Mike and just develop a personal relationship. So I got a chance to see her in that mother figure, got a chance to see her as the confidant and um, learned a lot and was just, it just grew a whole lot as a result of her willingness to, I didn't have to be born, you know, as her child. And um, she was just giving. And for that, I'm, I'm very thankful and I hope that I'm able to do the same thing and I ask that you guys, whatever experience you had with her, that you share it with somebody else. God bless you all. Thank you, you was reading my mind. I don't like to stand in nobody's pool, but. <laughs> but giving honor to the Lord today and just giving glory today, thanking God for all his endurance. Today I stand before my family and everyone who loves my aunt, my, my beautiful aunt. And I just wanna say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. This is a celebration, say hallelujah. We are here to praise the Lord and to give him our endurance. We thank him for our auntie. We thank him for our aunties and our family who paid the way for us. We thank him for we wouldn't be who we are had we had a praying grandmother. I saw my grandmother on her knees. And many a night I thought she was looking for something. And as I stand here, I found that she was, she found something. She found the Lord. And I thank her for introducing us to the Lord. We losing people, but we're not losing a battle. Find the Lord if you don't know where he at, look for him. Cause he waiting on you. I love y'all. My time is up. But glorifying the Lord. <laughs> amen, amen. Um, won't be before you long, but in full agreement with you, um, Paris, that, you know, we're here to celebrate uh, my grandmother, but, you know, we, you know, as the Lord says, we all give him praise. I want to respect the ground that I'm standing on and definitely give him praise and thanks and honor for being our protector and provider. And, you know, we got to give him praise in the good times, the bad times, even in death, but, you know, um, we're going to celebrate my grandmother's life today and um, just, you know, all the things that she's done for us. Um, you know, as I was thinking about my grandmother, you know, coming here, traveling from New Jersey, it's like, what are some of the things that that are good memories? And the one thing that I kind of wrapped up around was was the summers with, with grandma, you know, um, only you know, having a 14 hour drive trip from New Jersey in a car with seven, you know, six other brothers, only grandma could, could be worth that type of trip, you know. Um, 
And I thanks for all the good times with my uncles and my aunts. You know, grandma's house was the place. It was a place of love, it was a place of comfort. It was a place of bonding and, and, and building, building you know, relationships, strong relationships with your family. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, and she loved her, she loved her family. She loved her kids, she, the grandkids. She prayed for us, protected us. So um, just thankful to be here. Um, love you, Grandma. I'm going to miss all those summers with you. And um, to the family, I pray that God gives all of us comfort and peace during this time. Well, I didn't know what I was going to say when I got up, but um, man, we all knew her as mother. Not, we didn't call her grandma, we didn't call her nana, we called her mother, because that's what she gave to anybody that came into her house. It was that motherly love, that motherly chastising, that motherly uh, corny jokes, but they were still funny. Um, but, you know, you know, like Trav said, like we, we spent the summers in Chicago, and that was like one of the best times of our life, well, my life was coming to Chicago to spend time with our, with our family and getting to know all of our family. So, Mother, I just want to say thank you for the memories. Thank you for everything that you've done. And, and God bless you guys. That's all I got. Good morning. I want to say to this audience, I will be remiss if I didn't speak on Mama Mike. When I was a teenager, she took me in based off of Sheila and Jackie. And Tony, I remember spending many of nights there, many weekends, and like she said, that love that Mama Mike showed to us down through the years. And even as I got older, she never stopped. She was there for my wedding. She let me have my uh, bridal shower at her house. Any major event, Mama Mike was there. So I am just so thankful. My heart is hurting this morning, but I'm just so grateful that this lady and I, our paths crossed. And I just want to say thank you to this family for sharing your mom with us. Yeah. Just want to say good morning. Good morning. Well, um, here we go again. You know, we all got to go this way, but we don't know when. But I spoke with my auntie around about two months ago. My birthday was the 18th, her was the 26th. And she told me something before she left here. She said, I'm going, but I'm not worried. She said, because I'm going, where I can be peaceful at. I don't have to worry no more. But I just want to say one thing, and it's not easy. It's not easy. I just want to tell my cousins now and my aunties now that I, I'm getting older and I'm getting wiser because I'm watching everything that they do because what they do, it follows me. I'm one of the oldest out of all of them, out of all of my cousins now. And uh, I'm hoping that y'all got some of them recipes you know, y'all sitting around watching them leave here. You better get some of these recipes. <laughs> okay, I just want to. I just want to let y'all know it's not easy going into a kitchen and think you can cook and you know you can't cook. Okay, oh, especially you. I'm gonna leave that alone. But I just, I, I just had to come up here and let y'all know that today I want to put a smile on y'all face because she kept one on everybody's face. When her doors open, her doors open for everyone. And I know where she's at now. She's in heaven and that door is wide open. Wide open because she was a church going person. And uh, I'm gonna cut it short because the simple reason why, I'm mean, simple reason why because tomorrow ain't promised to no one. So if you ain't, you ain't right with God, you ain't going where she going. So you might as well take that back road because that front road is closed. <laughs> Y'all have a nice day, may God bless you. All praises to God and honor to the ministers. My sister and I, we're gonna make it short. Uh, we are, we are, we have another sister back there. We from a family of Sylvia. Would you stand up, please? We from a family of nine girls. 
and two boys. And we are the three girls. We are the three girls that's left. We, three girls and two boys left. So I stand here to say to give all the praise and the glory, not just for my big sister, but also from which we came from, our mom. And, and, and we do, you know, she taught us to be close. And then we go get in trouble. Somebody's going to kill all you all. I said, I said, well, you told us to be close, mother. I didn't tell you all to do that. Yes, you did. But you see how it extended. We're here today. She taught us about God. I had a praying mom. I had a praying big sister. And my big sister wasn't just my big sister. She was my friend. She was my running buddy. We worked together. We did a lot of things together. But one thing, we loved the Lord. We loved each other. My mama made us to love each other. You get to fight. You know what you had to do when you get to fight? Hug, kiss, make up, make up, make up. And and I just wanted you all to know that uh, I'm gonna truly, really, we are gonna truly miss her because, like they said, they gave all the parties and the baby showers and everything. It was the party house, and. I never forget the day when we saw that house, her and I went together. And I saw oh, Mike, come on, come see this basement. I said, oh, Mike, you got to get this house out. So we prayed in the basement, and she got it. And uh, I just want to just thank my family. I love my family because we from a lovely family, and I thank God for that. And uh, I also like to thank the minister, which is, you said, during this absence. I like to thank him. I've been there quite a few times. I met Pastor Gordon, and I loved him. And I came to visit quite a bit. So I just want to just thank you all for your service and everything. Thank you. Getting ready to go, Miss Red. Yes, I'm Irrevitai Twin. <laughs> giving, giving unto God, my sister and I go way back. Since I was 13 years old, she been there for me. We've been running the race together. I always told her, you don't have to call me. I said, I step in when I see a need. I said, what you need, I got it. At the end of her day, I said, I'm right here, I got you. I said, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to call me. I said, I jump in when I see help. Amen. But I love my sister. We did many things together. We loved together. We cried together. We parted together. We danced together. We prayed together. Amen. Her house always was open to everybody. She took care of everybody. <laughs> she had a big heart. And she gave so much. Yes, and I had to return that at the end to give her the love that she gave me. Amen. I said, you get what you give out. Hallelujah. If you don't give out nothing, you don't get nothing. Amen. So I'm going to make it short. Thank you for having us here. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and finish. I love everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. I just didn't know that you two ladies were coming. That's all. Thank you. All right. All righty then. You know, as an MC, I'm to follow the program. And so they need me to help keep things moving, okay? All right. Not to be offensive to anyone. All righty then. Yes, ma'am. We are, we are about to have a poem by Gordon Rosenberg. Wherever my son is, there he is right there. Following a poem by Gordon, we are going to have Ask the Church of God Choir to come with a song selection. All right, so you prepare choir, and Gordon is coming. Oh, wow. I'm good. Pretty good. See how tall he is? <laughs> um, wow. <clears throat> um, I'm reading a poem called God Saw You Getting Tired author unknown. Um, <clears throat> God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. 
So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. And although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hardworking hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes truly the best. Um, love you, mother. Um, great to see you, family. Hi, mom. <laughs>
Black if she will come for the reading of the obituary. You want to come? I'm sure I can see she might want to. Since you could go home, that'd be great. Following the reading of the obituary, we're going to ask the Evening Light brother if they will prepare themselves for a song. Good morning, church, and good morning to my beautiful family. I love each and every one of you guys. Um, bear with me, I don't public speak, but leave it to my auntie to even help me out and catapult me toward what God's um, purpose is. Um, when I think of my auntie, I think of each one teach one. She was definitely one of the matriarchs, and she definitely was that type of auntie that and I ask the same of each one of you to be the, the repairer of the breach. There was no wisdom, knowledge, or understanding that she, there was nothing she took with her. She gave it all to us and we have our youth and our children are in trouble and that was something that she believed in to always educate us, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, whether it be your children, your relationship, your whatever the situation is. She did not, she pulled no punches. So um, reflections. Many Askew, affectionately known as Mike, was born in Lambert, Mississippi, the second child to the loving parents of Jerry D. Martin and Arletha Martin, who both perceived her in death. Mike attended, attended Bashan High School in St. Louis, Missouri, later moving to Chicago, Illinois. She went on to work several jobs, but her favorite was Deborah School of Cosmetology where she taught hairstyling. She also worked for the Department of Human Service, Johnson & Johnson, and Board Warner. Mike received Christ and was baptized at Canaan Baptist Church on the south side of Chicago by Reverend C.J. Rogers. Mike loved to work with her hands. She was an exceptional cook. Mike was a self-taught seamstress making her children's clothes and sewing and hemming for many bridal parties in the church of God. She also did all our prom dresses too. <laughs> Can I get it? <laughs> she loved to help, she loved to help the needy. Her generosity was displayed to all who knew her. Her home was an open door for birthdays, baby showers, graduation parties, New Year Eve parties and family repasts, and for those who needed somewhere to stay. Mike was married to her loving husband for over 30 years, Marvin Askew, who preceded her in death. She was also preceded in death by her daughter, Jackie Walton. She leaves four amazing, amazing other children for her previous, from her previous marriage to Franklin Roosevelt Tidwell to cherish her loving memory. Frankie Ray Tidwell, Sheila Rosenberg, Jason, Frederick Tidwell, Tony Tidwell, and Otis Walton. Her loving son-in-law, her stepdaughter, Sally Askew, excuse me, Sally Askew King, nieces, nephews, cousins, and a host of grand and great grandchildren. Mike leaves to mourn her passing. Brothers Jerry Martin, Susan, James Martin, and her sisters Mary Keys, Earl, Willie Mae Martin, Flock, and Sylvia Duncan. There were five sisters who preceded her. Geraldine Ford, Jean Williams, Lucille McCorkle, Alice Martin, and Sandra Ware. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellent them all. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Thank you, family. Come on, eat my light, brother. If you look at your copy of your obituary, I mean, your program, it says, from the family, never forget the hands that raised you. Amen. That's so very important. That's very, very important. Never forget.
while the rest of the group is coming. Uh, I'm the other son-in-law, Brother Otis and myself, and I just would like to say uh, while they're coming that uh, I was very honored, still am very honored to be part of this family. Very honored to have known uh, my mother-in-law. We just called her, like so many have said, we just called her mother out of respect. She was a true mother. Uh, she was no pushover. She was, she was strong and she raised her children that way. And um, if she saw something she didn't like, she'd let you know, very quiet way. And I'll say this as being part of the family, uh, some people don't like this term, but uh, I praise God for her. She was 100% colorblind. Amen. Um, I believe her. I believe we, we, neither of us ever even thought about that stuff. And um, yeah, wh what is skin color anyway? It's nothing. It's what you got on the inside. Amen. It's whether you have the Lord on the inside. And uh, I'm just honored to have known her. I'm praying, for, praying for the family. I'm one of the ministers here at the Church of God. We're praying for the family. Amen. Earnestly that God will comfort you. And uh, those of you who don't know the Lord, uh, we believe that uh, Mother battled and made it in. Yes, sir. It, it was something worth having and something worth battling for. And uh, we're praying that you would do the same if you don't know Amen. the Lord. Amen. The name of the song is uh, On the Battlefield. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> Pray for us. <laughs> well, I'm on the battlefield. The battlefield. The battlefield. I'm just working, working for, my for my Jesus. For my I promise that I, God that I. That I Serve until I die. Till I die. Till yes, I, I took my master's hand. Took the master's hand. And I joined the, the Christian band. And I'm on the child of the battlefield. Well, working for my Lord. On the field, well, well, for my well, Lord. well, 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 I love. My flag, in, my battle. flag in battle. I've got the staff is in my hand. Staff is in my hand. Gonna take Took it on to Jesus. home to Took Jesus. Jesus. Over all in the glory land. land. Glory land. Glory yes, land. I know the sun, the sun will Go shine. The sun will shine. This little soul, soul, of mine, soul of mine, and I'm on the battlefield, the battlefield well, battle. working for my Lord. Well, 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 I'm on the battlefield. I'm just working for my Lord, for my Jesus. I promise God that I. Serve him till I die. Yes, I took my master's hand and I joined the Christian band. And I'm on I tried the battlefield now, working for my Lord. Well, 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 and well. I met my Savior, you know I met him, with a smile, he healed my wounded spirit, and he owned me as his child, well around the throne of grace, Appointed my, my soul a place, and I'm on, on the battlefield. child of battlefield. We're well, working for my Lord. On the field, well, 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 I'm on the battlefield. I'm just working for my Jesus. I promise God that I. 
Feel working for the Lord. That's what we need to do. We need to, we need to make sure we are right in our souls and then give God his work. And God has a work for all of us. So if you're not saved, get saved because God has something for you to do until he called you home. All right. Okay, I'm going to ask Sister Donna if she will come and uh, use the, read the acknowledgments for us, please. Following that, Brother Otis, son-in-law, we're going to ask you to follow her, please. Thank you. So the family just wants you to know that we're praying for you. We love you. Resurrection House Baptist Church, located at 245 East 138th Street, Dalton, Illinois. Resolution for Minnie Mike Askew. Whereas Miss Minnie Askew was a loving mother to Sister Sally Askew King and the mother-in-law to Brother Henderson King Jr. And whereas Sister Sally Askew King and Brother Henderson King Jr. are both members of Resurrection House Baptist Church, and whereas from the time they first joined Resurrection House, both of them unselfishly gave their time in any way they were asked. And whereas our church family shares in their loss, we lift Sister Sally and Brother Henderson and their entire family to an almighty father who will wipe away all tears and mend all broken hearts. We ask them to continue to trust God and lean on him in the days to come. Therefore, be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, and we commend every member of the family to God who will heal all hurt and give all understanding. And be it further resolved that a copy of these words of comfort be given to Sister Sally, a copy to be given for the family's keepsake, along with a copy being placed in the archives of Resurrection House Baptist, Baptist Church done by the order of the officers and members of Resurrection House Baptist Church, Dalton, Illinois, on this 18th day of March, 2023. Reverend John W. Moore, Interim Pastor, Reverend Maddie Randall, First Lady. To the family of the late Minnie Askew, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them, Revelation 14 and 13. We, the entire membership of the Rock of Ages Baptist Church, Maywood, Illinois, take this time to share our heartfelt and sincere sympathy with the entire Askew family in the loss of your loved one. We extend to you our love and know that we, and know that our God is able to wipe all tears away. Be it resolved that in the humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, we bow and commend you to his care, who is willing and able to heal all sorrows. If we can be of any assistance, even after this hour, please know that we will be there. May the words of Jesus be comfort to you all, which he said in Matthew 9 and 24, give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. Your loved one is only sleeping, and we know in that great resurrection morning, that she shall rise and enjoy the eternal bliss of heaven. Humbly submitted this 18th day of March in the year 2023, Rock of Ages Baptist Church, Reverend Marvin E. Wiley is the pastor. 
the Church of God of Chicago, located at 4601 South Drexel Boulevard, to the family of Mrs. Minnie Askew, the Church of God, located at 4601 South Drexel Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, would like to express our heartfelt sympathy to you in the loss of your beloved mother and grandmother, Mrs. Minnie Mike Askew. If griefs seem more than you can bear, keep praying and toiling on. For praying lightens every care, keep praying and toiling on. The songs we sing were written from experience. Even the psalmist David understood the power of prayer when he penned, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved, Psalm 55 and 22. As we weep with you, may you find peace in the promises of God, pleasure in precious memories and strength in the prayer support of the saints and loved ones. Saying goodbye to the matriarch of the family is a touching, tender time, but for those who have faith in God, there is a consolation and hope, even in sorrow. Death and separation are the result of sin. The good news is that Jesus came to take away sin and give us life everlasting. Our Savior declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. St. John 14 and 6. Always fitting for any occasion, the gospel is glad tidings that offer hope, deliverance, and joy to whoever believes. Family, if we can be of further assistance to you, please know that we are here for you. Lovingly submitted this 18th day of March 2023, the Church of God of Chicago, Elder Ricky Dukes Sr. is our pastor. Thank you. I want to say first, thank God for you being saved and very much encouraged to live for the Lord. I thank God for this family here that married you too, back in 87. I want to say to the family, I love you all. I'm happy to be a part of you all. I thought about when I was sitting there, Lord, that's what to say. I thought about for a few months and weeks, I, I, I didn't come and see mother. And talking to Melvin one day, Melvin said, oldest. They are loved ones. We got to take care. And I thought about what he said. Even Jackie, when she was down with cancer, I was there with Jackie. And she died in my arms. I said, "No, my man, he's right." I didn't want to. I didn't want to uh, uh, recycle that again for our mother with the cancer. And Melvin said, "Oh, this, you know, they are loved ones. We got to take care. Of even though, even up in the hospice, and God let me know. Go see your mother-in-law." When I went to see her the first time, Auntie Willie May was up there and. And she lives in the room. So I couldn't say what I wanted to say to her. So I came the following week. Tony was downstairs in the Chinese school, straight in the basement. <laughs> and mother upstairs. I came to the stairway. Mother? She said, come on up, son. <laughs> I came upstairs. I walked over to the bed. And she was laying down. I said, I looked, I looked down at mother, just love, just smiling. I said, mother, give me your hand. She put the left hand here, the right hand here. I said, Mother, we're going to have prayer. She looked at me, she said, okay. So I prayed for her. When I got through praying for her, she looked up at me. She just smiled. We still holding hands. And she told me, I was like, came in her mouth. She said, Otis, I told you, you are not my son-in-law. You are my son. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why she called me son because I always did things pleasing to her. Over, I remember Jackie over 34 years. Mother asked me to do something, I did it. I ain't talking about anything like simple, simple things, but what she wanted, if a contract, contract, to come, contract to come by the house and something pleased with, she, Ray ain't there, Freddie's not there, Melvin there work, who? It's me, I had to stand in the gap. <laughs> I had to go out there and deal with it. I had to deal with it. And see, one thing about a woman, I learned through Jackie, a woman want her man, her husband, her son-in-law to come to her rescue. When you, do, when you do that there, 
they will call you their son. That's what you call me, her son. I love mother. Mother had a big heart. When I married Jackie in 87, we was trying to get a place to stay and all that. And mother said, you know what? Y'all come and stay with me. We stayed in her basement three years, me and Jackie, because she knew I loved Jackie. And Jackie loved me. And once we took off from Atlanta, from, from, uh, from uh, 540 South Humphrey in three years, we started flying, me and Jackie. We didn't look back. We kept flying. Guys, like my job and everything. But mother has a heart of love. She really have stayed with mother. Mother was a blessing to us. Those who stayed with her and know what kind of person she was. She was a mother. Like Jason said, we could all call her mother. I never called her Millie or Mike. I always said I've been married to the family, always mother. Is that right, Jason? From day one, because we love our daughters, Sheila and Jackie. With that said, it was not so far everything that was said about mother was wonderful, it's true. You know, we're going to miss her. But God loves her much than we do. He called her home. I thank God that one thing about the, about the devil, we can't put our foot on the devil's neck. The Bible says he only could come for the kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said he came that we might have life more abundantly. Also, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. I love my mother-in-law. I pray someday to see her and Jack and the saints over in glory. Pray for my students. Now, wasn't that beautiful? Th that was simply beautiful. Thank you, Brother Otis. Thank you. Yes, called him son. Not an in-law, but a son. Very good. All righty, then. We're going to have one last selection by Mr. and Mrs. Scarver. Scarvers, okay? And then we're going to prepare ourselves for the eulogy following their selection, all right? Good morning, church. Good morning, everybody. Uh, giving it on to God, the ministry here and each and every one of you here in your prospective places. Um, I just wanted to say that it's a privilege to be in the presence of, of God and, and all the saints here and a wonderful saint of God who has, as the previous song said, was, was on the battlefield for so many years fighting for the souls of, of, of all of her loved ones. Um, we were gonna originally, as you see on the program, sing Pulling Me Through, but you know, as when you when you're meditating on a song and, and God starts to speak to you in the midst of it, he says that uh, in order for me to pull you through, you can't give up. It's necessary that you do your part. And um, I just wanted to say something that uh, somebody told me that they're very wise, very wise. Our pastor, um, she says to us that death comes to teach us the value of life. So um, y'all pray with us as we sing. up to me to decide but how can I expect to win if I never ever try oh, I, I just can't give up now I've come too far from where I started from Nobody told me the road would be easy, and I'd 
don't believe He's brought me this far to leave me Never said there wouldn't be trials Never said I wouldn't fall Never said that everything would go the way I want it to go But when my back is up against the wall And it seems our hope is gone I just lift my head up to the sky And say help me to be strong Oh, I, I just can't give up now I've come too far from where I started from Nobody told me the road would be easy And I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me No, I know you didn't bring me no, no. out here to leave me lonely oh, oh. Even when I can't see clearly I, I know, know that, that you are with, with me so I can't I just can't give up To leave me. Oh, I, I don't, don't believe he's brought me this far. No, I, I don't, don't believe, believe he's brought, brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this step by step. Don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this day by day. I don't believe he's brought me this far. I don't believe he's brought me this day by day. I don't believe he's brought me this far. All this way, I don't believe. He's brought me this far. Can never leave me. I don't believe he's brought me this far. You all be encouraged with courage. God bless y'all. The Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. I didn't say the journey wouldn't get hard, but he promised to never leave us nor forsake us. So hold on to God's unchanging hand. Thank you, I enjoyed the song. Thank you, thank you. You've been a beautiful, beautiful audience. We, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. And at this time, we are going to turn the service into the hand of Elder Darius Brown. Let's acknowledge the Lord in prayer. Father, we're so grateful to you for your goodness again. We thank you. For the wonderful reflections, dear God, the tributes, the songs, the poems, the remarks, so many good things to say about Mother, dear God, and what she has meant and the impact she has had. And Lord, by the crowd that is here, we can see a life that's been well lived. And God, we thank you for that. And Lord, as we come to this portion of the service, we pray that you would be with us, dear God. We pray that you would bless all that's said and done, bless this eulogy, God. Anoint it, and for what you do, we'll give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And right before we go further, I'd just like to read a scripture here. In Proverbs, the, the 31st division, uh, it talks about the virtuous woman. And there is an excerpt in the obituary from the, the virtuous woman. And I just want to read verse number 26 through 28. Verse 26 says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. 
She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. And I read that scripture because today we have a eulogy that will be delivered by one of mother's children. We're going to ask Brother Frankie if he will come up at this time. We'll ask that you pray for him as he eulogizes his mother. It's not easy talking about your mother, but we're praying that God would help him. And who better to, you know, a eulogy is to talk about the life of the person that has gone on. Who better to talk about that life than somebody who she gave life to? So let's pray for him and let's receive him with a hearty amen. the pulpit, choir, to the mistress of ceremony, to the songs that have been sang, to all those who have left kind remarks today, I thank you. I see a lot of my cousins. My mother had a lot of sisters, so that means a lot of babies. A lot of babies had babies. By raise of hand, how many of you all here has my mother slid some money in your hand? My. Now I know why my check was always short when she's mailed it to New Jersey. My mother had a big heart. She loved to be able to do for others. Her DNA was selflessness. She had compassion. My mother was in a car accident when I was just a little boy. Her and my father was driving down Lake Street and they hit the pole. They almost died when I was just about 12 years old. I didn't see my mother and father for almost two months. My Auntie Mary came and took care of my sister Sheila and I and Jackie until my mother was able to come home, then my father came home. What I saw was that God was merciful and allowed my mother to stay in the land of the living. Twenty years later, almost 40 years later, she had kidney, kidney failure. She called me and said, son, my kidney is failing and um, the doctor's not giving me much longer to live. I only have one kidney. I said, mom, I'll, I'll come there and I'll donate the kidney. I was not compatible. Others weren't compatible. But one day, on December the 24th, 14 years ago, my mother got a call. We have a kidney for you, Mike. She said, I'll come later. <laughs> my sister Jackie said, no, you're going today. <laughs> You are going right now. And God turned around and gave her almost 17 years later. Oh, 
she received mercy because she was merciful. Because she was merciful, God blessed her with mercy. But my mother was a praying mother. When I got shot at 17 years of age, colostomy bag in my side, a bullet wound in my arm, a 38 slug went through my stomach. My mother prayed. It's nothing like a mother's prayer. Oh, she may not be able to sing. She may not, may not be able to quote the Bible, but she can pray to a God in heaven. My mother prayed and asked God to spare her son. And God did just that. And then he turned around and led me to the church of God. God can dream bigger than our dreams. God can take us further than our dimensions. God can enlarge our territories. God can expand our width. I did not know, my mother did not know that God would bring me to the church of God. The young brother that sang a mother's love. God did not know that he would use me to bring that brother to the church of God. And here God allows that brother to sing a mother's love to me. I give God all the praise and all the glory. You say, why are you in a uniform as a firefighter? Because I am the extension of my mother. My mother loved Tiger Woods. I would call on a Saturday morning, Mom, what you doing? Watching Tiger. <laughs> He's about to land a birdie. I said, Mama, when you started liking golf? Back in 1996 when Tiger won the Masters. <laughs> she loved to see Tiger play. But there was someone else that was more fascinating. She was more proud of. That was her own flesh and blood. She saw God turn a young man from drugs, from gambling, from chasing the woman, partying, turn him around and set him on a street called straight. She saw God lift a young man out of a horrible pit and establish his goings. She saw God take a young man whose mind was messed up and make them sound. Young people are committing suicide today. Young people are taking their lives today. They need a mother that can pray. They need a mother that can pray. They need a mother that can break the chains. They need a mother that can get a prayer through to God. They need a mother that can say, turn my son around. Turn my daughter around. They need a mother like that. And that's how my mother was. So when I became a firefighter, she treated me like I was Tiger Woods. <laughs> she was so proud of me. It fascinated her. I don't care where she went. She said, oh, that's my son. He's a fire chief. <laughs> Wherever we went in the airport, Oh, have you met my son? <laughs> Mom, we're strangers. He's a fire chief. <laughs> she was so proud. And I know that had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Where would I be? She prayed from a, for a young man that came out of Rockwell Garden Projects. Can any good thing come out of Rockwell? Can any good thing come out of the hood? God said yes. Because if I can touch it, if I can touch it, I can change it. If I can touch it, I can change it. Cousins, I want you all to know that God can touch you. 
God can touch you. We're here to celebrate a queen. When Queen Elizabeth died, they brought out all the pomp. Everybody put on a uniform. I want us to stand and give my mother a hallelujah clap. What a eulogy. What a eulogy. Her children shall rise and call her blessed. What a eulogy. She would be proud. She would be proud. And he said some key items here. God can change you. God can make a clean thing come out of an unclean thing. We serve the God that knows how to change you from being a sinner to a saint. Because you can't be both at the same time. You either clean or you're dirty. You ever seen somebody who's almost pregnant? Either you're pregnant or you're not. And what he just went over to us is he, he told us about how God had the power through a praying mother, God had the power to change someone from doing stuff that they knew was wrong to having the power to not do that again. Don't you know that's what salvation is about? It's deliverance. And there were many times, what a, I, I'm, I'm still just amazed. Very beautiful tribute. Beautiful tribute uh, to your mother. Many times we saw mother sit right, maybe two or three pews in front of that pole. She was consistent. Whether she was here with uh, Sister Jackie or whether she was just here on her own, Maybe, or with Sister Sheila, maybe two or three pews in front of that pole and just that soft smile. She was consistent, soft smile. But I don't want us to leave this day, and we're, we're getting ready to call for uh, the, the morticians, but I don't want us to leave without getting what Brother Frank said. There is power in God to change you from what you're, what you are right now to what you could be and what you should be. And God is using mother to bring all of us into this one room to remind us that one day we're going this way. And the way we live will determine how we die. You don't live like a cat and wake up a dog. If you live a sinful life, you're going to wake up on the other side a sinner. But God has the power to deliver you and I today, to break the chains of sin today, to stop you from cursing today, to stop you from drinking today, stop you from gambling today, fornicating today, a, a clubbing today, hypocriting today. He's got the power to change you. And that's the message mother's leaving with us. It's time to look at our lives and say, am I ready? Am I living in a way where God is pleased with me? I, I didn't ask what church you went to. I said, are we living in a way where every day of our life we're living the way God would have us live? Because, friend, if we're not living that way, many of us, and we, we're grateful to hear, Mother made it in. If we're not living right today, we're going to be saying goodbye to Mother because we'll never see her again. But you have the opportunity to change your life in a way where you can say good night. I'll see you in the morning. So as God has talked to our hearts, listen, this is a church where we believe in living right. 
We don't believe in playing church. We don't believe in being religious. We believe in living right. And because we believe that God has used this occasion of mother's life to remind all of us, death is certain. And God gave her a long life. Thank God for it. There are many people who don't live to see the years that she had. God gave her a long life. But it doesn't matter how long you hear. What matters is what you do with the time God gives you. Let's take the message from that eulogy. I, Lord, I want you to change me. I want you to make my life something worthwhile. I want you where everybody else looks at me and says, can't no good come out of that. I want you to change me to a way where I don't recognize myself. Clean me up to a point where people have to look and say, is that the same person? Don't you know the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he ain't trying to be a new creature. He is a new creature and old things are not passing. We don't slow down smoking, we stop smoking. We don't slow down drinking, we stop drinking. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Thank God for the life of mother. Thank God for the eulogy. Thank God for the service. What a beautiful tribute. What a beautiful tribute. What a beautiful tribute of a life well lived. What a beautiful tribute. We'll call the morticians at this time. Funeral directors, if you'll come at this time. As we mentioned earlier, there will not be a review per the family's request. There will not be a review at this time. Are there instructions you all need to give in terms of the burial? Thank you, everyone. We are going to line up here on Drexa, headed north. We're going to go to 43rd and make a left and go over to the Dan Ryan, take the Dan, Dan Ryan to the 290. We're going to go out 290 to Mannheim Road. Everybody know where Mannheim Road? If you don't, try to stay close, safe as possible. But we're going to come off on Mannheim Road and go south over to Roosevelt. That's where the cemetery, Oak Ridge, 4300, 4, in, I think there's Hillside. It's on, I think it's on the beach where we have it. But let's try to stay close and try to stay safe. Thank you. The repast following the burial will be at Harvest 365, 7601 West Roosevelt Road in Forest Park. Harvest 365, 7601 West Roosevelt Road in Forest Park. Elder Sandridge, will you come and offer benediction prayer? Let's look to the Lord. Father, we, we're so thankful, dear God, for your visitation, dear God. Thank you for the life of Mother, Lord, and my God, this whole family, dear God. And Lord, we pray that you continue to bear them up, my God, Lord, and continue to comfort them, dear God. Lord, be with a, a whole processional, Lord God, as they uh, go to the burial site, Lord. And we thank you for the service in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May we have 10 uh, ladies to come and please help with the flowers. Paul Bearers, please meet us to the back on the left side. That's on the left side. 